I, oh, by the way, before we get started, I'm still selling this for $4 million, so if you want to buy it, come talk to me afterwards, okay? $4 million, I'm not budging on it. Okay, now the parable we're reading tonight is the parable of the treasure hidden in the field. It's really short, so we're going to read it again just to refresh everyone's memory. It's up on the screen there, I'll read it for you. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy, he went and sold all he had, and he bought that field. Now, I have a friend who's going to help me explain a little bit about that before tonight. Do you remember my friend from last night? No more! Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a little guy. Like asking four million dollars for a toy. It'd be silly. But 
Jesus does something even crazier here. Now, this is very important. Everybody listen. Jesus does something even crazier. He says, I'm not going to sell you the treasure. I'm going to give you the treasure. For free. So Norm gets to take off the crown of thorns. He gets to scoot over the nails and he gets to get rid of the, tra the trap right here. And Jesus is just going to give him this for free. Now does Norm, Norm look happy or sad now? He's very, very happy. He can't believe it. He's, he's speechless. Because this doesn't happen. This is crazy. But now, there's still one more problem. Does anybody know what the problem is? Well, look at the table. Norm's got his treasure. Oh, I forgot. Transfer of the, of the, of the uh, crown as well. He's looking very dignified. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. We still have a heaping pile of garbage on this table. And a God is a fair God. That was debt that Norm incurred. Do you think God, if he's fair, can let that debt go and just forget about it? No, he's fair. It has to be paid. Somebody has to account for all this stuff. So then this is where Jesus does something even crazier. Jesus says, I'll give you the treasure, and I'll give you the crown, and I'll take the garbage, and I'll take your crown of thorns, and I will take your nails. Oops. Why do I only have three nails? Does anybody know? Big kids, why do I have three nails? Monte. They nail one in each hand and then they nail both, both feet together, right? Now they killed Jesus like you would kill a criminal. Like you would kill a bad guy. Like you would kill somebody who did something awful. What's funny about that is, did Jesus do anything awful? No. No, he didn't do one thing awful. In fact, he's the only person in the whole world that never did anything wrong. Did Norm do anything awful? Sometimes he did, yeah. Sometimes he did. Sometimes they were little things, sometimes they were big things. But to God, it's all sin, and it was all bad. Now here's the question. This is the $4 million question. Why on earth would Jesus Christ make this trade? It doesn't make any sense, does it? Treasure for garbage? A crown of jewels for a crown of thorns? Why would he do it? Go ahead. Say it loud. Because he loves us. That's exactly right. What was Jesus' condition before, before he came down to earth? Was he like Norm? Was he poor? And was, was he dirty and all that? No, where was he? He was living in heaven with the Father. Sitting on his throne, reigning perfectly. He had everything he could ever want. So he didn't need any of this. But he looked down on us, and he felt sorry. He had mercy on us, and he felt love and compassion for us. And he made this trade. Now, second question. Can you go to Q2? Who receives the treasure? Who do you think Jesus died for? Is it a one-to-one -one trade? Did he just die for Norm? Cody, we got John 1.12. It says, listen to this. It says, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. So what does that mean? That means that, that okay, so Norm's pretend, right? We'll say that this is my treasure. That means that Christ not only gave me a treasure, but he offers you a treasure, and he offers you a treasure, and he offers you a treasure. In fact, everybody in this room... You can imagine this treasure chest piled all the way up to the top. Everyone gets a treasure from Christ, or he offers everyone a treasure rather. Now, what does that verse say we have to do? Do we have to work really hard? Do we have to dig in a field all day for the treasure? No. Do we have to be as good as we can? We sin sometimes to be as good as we can? No, I tricked you. I think I tricked you. No, that doesn't work either. It says, to those who received him and those who believed in his name. What's the word there? What's the B word? Believe. I have a question. If you have a present on Christmas morning, a big present with red wrapping around it, and you run down the stairs, and you don't open that present at all, and you just let it sit there, and you don't look at it, and you don't bother with it, do you get to play with the toy in there? No, it just stays in the box. And your parents are going to say, 
what the heck is he doing? Why isn't he opening the present? It's just like a gift. This treasure is a gift. If you want it, you have to receive it. You have to open, open up, open up the, uh, the present. All right, let me see my time here. Okay, I got, I got one minute left. I want to make this practical for you. Listen up, listen up. One more minute, and you get the sketch. I'll go on for twenty. Okay, listen up. Now I said you have to believe in him. What does that look like, and what does that mean? I basically showed you how the gospel works, but now I want to I want to show you what you need to do, or how or, or how you need to respond. When somebody gives you a present, you receive it if you want the gift, right? When I was a kid, I was a little bit older than those kids in the back. I realized that I was a sinner, and I read my Bible, and I learned that God didn't just want me to go to church and be good. He, want, he did want those things, but the most important thing He wanted from me was for me to receive Him as my Savior and to have a relationship with Him. He wanted to be my friend and to be my Lord. So when I was like 14 or 13, I prayed, and I said, God, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm, going to, I'm turning away from them and I'm repenting of them and I accept you as my Savior. That's how I believe and how I was saved. Now the same treasure is offered to everyone in here. And I know that some of you are, are young enough where you haven't accepted Christ yet or you don't know what it is. I tell, I'll, I'll tell you this one thing. If you have questions, if you have questions, I want you to go to your teacher. That's the first thing. They would love nothing more than to, than to answer your questions. Mr. Williams has a pretty stoic face, but if you ask him something about Jesus, he's going to light up like a Christmas tree. So ask your teachers if you have questions. But I want you to know, last, this is the last thing, guys. I want you to know this. This present, this present is available for each one of you individually. I'm not speaking in general terms here. For you, for you, for you. I want you to go home tonight, and I want you to think about this and pray about this. God, are you calling me to have a personal relationship with you? Not just come to VBS and have fun, which we love to do, but to have a relationship with you, to receive him as your Savior. All right, let me pray, and then we'll do the skit. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for all the treasure you give us. We can never pay you back, and uh, that's the point of the gospel, that we, 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 never can, we never can and we never will. We just want to thank you for it, Lord, and I just pray that um, if it be your will, that your spirit would move in these kids tonight, and, uh, and uh, that they would, they would come alive for you, Lord. Uh, bless this time, in your son's name we pray, amen.